This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. Hey guys, Big Paul here with an off-season check-in. Haven't done one of these in a bit. Uh, it's been a few weeks. Uh, my apologies for that. Life's been crazy. A lot going on. Um, kids, work, you know. Not bodybuilding stuff. Uh, but I'm going to dig into where I'm at. Uh, not much has changed over the last couple weeks. So I really haven't missed much. But uh, this week I did make some changes. So I figured it would be worth putting an update up. And we are going to dig into all that in just one second. <laughs> All right, so my vitals this week. Facet weight is up from 267 to 268. I'm honestly no different than I was at this point last year. I don't know. It, it's been, I'm only up like seven, eight pounds from the start of my off season. I dropped all that weight after I had uh, the flu. And I just haven't regained it since. Now, I will say this. This is my first off-season run in Primo as my primary anabolic. And I have stayed a lot drier. I don't have all the puff and bloat like I did when I'm around NPP in the off-season. So, I don't know how much to read into the weight. The, the weight last year may have been more bloat. This year, I seem to have stayed tighter. I Maybe it's in my head. But it feels like I've stayed tighter. We definitely have stayed drier. Uh, with the Primo, it, it is a different sort of effect. The Nandrolone, when you take Nandrolone, it, it it makes you puffy and you just get this big round look that I, I don't think you seem to get with Primo Bolin as your primary anabolic, which is fine. Uh, I like staying drier. I've noticed that my blood pressure stayed lower. I haven't had issues with my blood pressure like I did last year. And it's I think it's probably healthier for you. Uh, my height, everybody asks me how tall I am. I'm 6'2". Daytime weight is 276 right now. Uh, blood pressure is 125 over 78 when I checked it the other day. It's been fine. This has been great with, like I said, with Primo. My, I haven't had the issues with my blood pressure like I've had in the past. Primo also keeps my... Uh, estrogen lower without using an AI. So I, right now I'm running 750 tests, not using an AI. My health, I'm finally back to 100%. I had, as you guys know, I've talked about it in my other videos, I had the flu and then it turned into pneumonia. And I was essentially pretty much down for three weeks. I pushed myself back into the gym too soon. I tried to come back a week after and I think it just made things worse. I'm a knucklehead like that. I tell, I, tell my clients to take it slow, take it easy, and then I don't follow my own advice. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you have to think, with bodybuilding, you have to play the long game. I know you're, you're anxious to get back into the gym after an injury or being sick, but you have to think about the long, long term. Everything in bodybuilding is long term. One workout doesn't make or break you. It's the long term effect of, of things that make or break you. Uh, picks this week. I definitely have filled back out a bit. I, I I feel like I picked up some body fat. I don't know. It's hard to tell. My legs are sort of smoothed out. That could be just water. I don't know, but I definitely don't have the separation in my legs that I had a month or so ago. Um, I mean, overall, I could still... My rule of thumb for getting too fat for the offseason, if I can't see the outline of my abs, then I'm too fat. But clearly, you can see here... You can see the outline of my abs. They're still there. I, I don't have fat rolls. So I think I'm good to keep pushing. Uh, shots from the back and the side. Could still see my serratus a bit. Separation from my hamstrings to my my quads. My back, this is where I carry fat. Somebody pointed out in one of my other check-in videos like is that fat in your lower back or is that loose skin and it's probably a little bit of both but definitely lower back is where i carry my fat i get a little bit of the muffin top 
Uh, current diet with Justin. Uh, we have been running three high days. He generally does not run three high days in the off season. With my clients, I don't often run three high days unless somebody's got a super high metabolism. But I have not been able to gain weight. <laughs> so, and I really feel like I am up against the limit of what I can eat. I, I'm at max capacity right now without adding in some trash. And sometimes I have i don't like to do it, but when I have coached people, there's some people I just cannot get to gain weight and you got to throw in a little bit of trash in there, like some fast food or something. It, not a ton. You don't want to do a ton because you don't want to blow up your lipids and get your blood pressure through the roof. You, you don't want to be eating like Cali Muscle where you completely lived off of fast food. And then wonder why you had a heart attack. <laughs> so, you know, you're eating fast food five times a day and you, you wonder why you have a coronary artery blockage. I don't know. Uh, so right now my current macros are 360 protein on low days, 360 carbs, 84 grams of added fat. For the added fat, I do not count the fat in the protein sources. Just to be clear... I keep my protein sources as lean as possible. So things like chicken breast, white fish, sometimes protein powder. You guys know I'm not a huge protein powder fan, but I have had to use some protein powder this off season just to get the food in. I get a really, really high quality whey isolate. Most protein powder is trash and will fuck your stomach up. I, I have no affiliation with True Nutrition. But I have been getting, I forget which one it was. It's one of their more expensive whey isolates that, that's like super, super filtered. Um, I can't remember, but Dante Trudell owns that company. And, and um, really high quality whey protein if you want whey protein. So I've been doing one shake a day, not every day, maybe like four or five times a week just to get the food in. I hate doing it. I'd rather eat real food, but I, I'm just, my appetite just fucking sucks right now. Uh, so for, for the added fats, back to the added fats, we, I use EFAs, um, things like olive oil, nuts, nut butters, avocados, shit like that. For my medium days, which are any non high day that is a training day right now, I am doing 340 grams of protein on those days. I am doing, uh, 600 grams of carbs on those days and 40 grams of added fat. For my high days, I am doing 1,000 grams of carbs, 290 grams of protein, and zero grams of added fat. Those are the days that we're going to be pounding insulin. So you want to keep your fats as low as possible. Any additional fats you put in your diet when you're pounding the insulin is just going to go straight to adipose tissue uh, because your body is going to prioritize the carbohydrates for fuel source um, uh, so you're just wasting your time putting added fats in. You're just going to make your fat self fatter by adding uh, fat on your high days or when you're pounding food and using insulin. So that when I hear people all the time say, oh, insulin did is made me fat. It's because you're eating too much fucking fat. You dumb fuck. Uh, so what do you think is going to happen if insulin tr triggers nutrient uptake in, at the cell and, uh, you're your body's prioritizing carbohydrates for fuel and that your body will also store carbohydrates as glycogen and it doesn't need that fat for anything. What do you think is going to happen to that fat? All right. Uh, current PEDs. I upped my PEDs a week or so ago. I don't know. Maybe it was two weeks ago. I don't remember. A couple weeks ago. 750 test, 450 EQ, 600 Primo. Uh, my total load right now is 1,800 milligrams, 1 1.8 grams. That is the highest I've ever pushed in off-season. Just being honest about it. It's the highest I've ever pushed off-season for the in my memory. I, maybe when I was younger, I tried 1,200 milligrams of test. One time I remember it made me fucking sick. Uh, I always laugh at these guys that I put a video up the other day about pro bodybuilding steroid doses I always laugh at these guys that think that pros are taking 10 grams of gear first of all how are you going to pen all that and it's going to make you sick so i, I just I, maybe there are you know there is always some dumbass that does something stupid i'm sure there is somebody out there that does that but i'm almost my daytime weight's almost 280 pounds and you see what i take 
Uh, I reduced my GH. I was at eight units. I pulled it back down to six. I, my hands were getting fucking numb again, and my fasted glucose levels started shooting up. So I have tried many times to push up past eight units or up to eight units, and it just doesn't work for me. And I don't know what else to say. So that also is another thing that makes me laugh when guys think dudes take 20 units of GH. First of all, who the fuck can afford that? That's like $200,000 a year in fucking pharmaceutical grade GH or even more maybe. I don't know. Uh, so, and plus, I don't know what your insulin sensitivity in your hands are going to feel like. If your hands are so fucking numb, you can't grip the weight, you can't lift weights, you can't grow. I don't know what the point would be in taking that much GH. And if your insulin sensitivity is blown out completely, uh, you're just going to store v visceral fat and look like shit. So I, I and not grow. <laughs> so there's no point. Uh, I do use uh, 80 milligrams of telmisartan for uh, for my blood pressure. Humalog on the high days, one unit per 20 grams of carbs, roughly. I don't I don't really strictly. Pers strictly follow that i measure my glucose levels and let my glucose levels dictate my insulin and i use 25 units of lantus every day pre-bed current health supplements uh 1500 milligrams of berberine per day i use a uh, suppressor from first detachment nutrition it has the fenugreek in it to help with the absorption so uh, you don't have to buy the two separately so just pick up suppressor from first detachment nutrition uh, for general health, I use a whole food vitamin, uh, vitamin C, 5,000 units of vitamin D per day. Although I may lower that because I've seen some of my uh, clients have vitamin D levels that are too high. So I don't know. Mine are always borderline. Cardiovascular health, I take 3,000 milligrams of fish oil. I take CoQ10, niacin, citrus bergamot, baby aspirin. For liver, I do Tucka, Milk Thistle, and NAC. I get QRF from First Detachment Nutrition that has all three in it. They're sold out right now. I was told that they would have more in stock here in a few weeks. So if, it get, if they get it back in, pick it up. The shit works great. I pulled my liver values down into the 30s. And if you know anything about... Liver values, when you take PEDs and lift weights, every single person I see, their blood work that is on PEDs and lift weights has elevated liver enzymes. Everyone. Um, and for kidney, I take astragalus and some other stuff. I use renal assist from First Detachment Nutrition um, for my kidney health. And it has a bunch of stuff in there for kidney health. So you don't have to buy all the ingredients separately. For RX medicines i take 1500 well actually i lowered it to a thousand milligrams of metformin per day uh 1500 just crushed my appetite i couldn't eat uh, i had pulled it back down to a thousand 80 milligrams of telmosartan and i take pantapro pantaprazole for acid reflux everybody seems to fucking lose their shit about pantaprazole and saying that it's not good for you and yada 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 i tell you what's not good for you is having acid reflux eating a hole in your esophagus and ending up with esophageal cancer. I personally know of two people that have died from esophageal cancer from untreated acid reflux. And in my experience, most bodybuilders have acid reflux and no, um, people seem to think that apple cider vinegar will fix it. I, in 95% of the situations I have seen with people that are in bodybuilding and have acid reflux, it is not an issue with not producing enough stomach acid and, and the apple cider vinegar doesn't fix it for us. A lot of times it's the sphincter in the uh, esophagus that goes to the stomach is, does not close or people have hiatal hernias. Apple cider vinegar is not going to fix that. Training, I'm doing my RP program, push-pull legs, uh, my high volume scheme, cardio, 15 minutes of hit three times a week. I'm supposed to be doing, to be honest with you, I'm not that great about doing it right now. Plans and thoughts, uh, diet adherence. I, I've had a few extra cheat meals just to try to get some weight on. Um, current uh, coach's feedback, he wants me to get up to 270 and then we'll reevaluate the diet, maybe go back down to two high days. I changed out my, some of my exercises. I was using hammer strength uh, pen machines for my all my pressing movements. And I have maxed all those machines out. <laughs> I'm using the whole stack for like 12 to 15 reps 
on the shoulder press, the hamstring shoulder press and hamstring uh, chest press. So I am going back to Smith machine presses. I thought about using free weight barbell presses, but I just, it, the injury risk is too high at my age. It's just not worth it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Hopefully you found this helpful. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.